I uh, slowly, slowly start. It's uh, one minute past and uh, one of the, say, interesting experiences made with this um, pandemic situation, all the digital tools is um, time is uh, limited a lot. So if you're five minutes late in a Zoom session, everybody is super annoyed. So I uh, slowly start uh, talking us into this, uh, into this um, uh, action. Um, you see um, some faces with this um, beam uh, banner at the back. Uh, we are the ones organizing it. Um, just to introduce uh, ourselves, uh, Bastian, who just raised his hand, um, <clears throat> he's the DJ. He takes control of all the activities and uh, making sure you're all uh, well uh, positioned. Christian, uh, Chris, Con um, Chris Borg, um, one of uh, the early founders of this uh, beam activity is the person who knows you all. He has uh, relatives all over the world and knows everybody in this uh, 3D printing uh, world. Uh, Philip Rosendahl um, uh, joined this uh, uh, activity as a uh, postdoc uh, in uh, uh, our institute at the civil engineering faculty to naja, push this more into an not only object, but also technology and material uh, level. And we miss um, Oliver Tessmann, who's, and that's another thing with this um, digital environment, uh, is able to take an, an appointment which he had to take because of our rector forced him to do this for at least half an hour. So it's going to be uh, off for this situation and then directly uh, uh, jumping into this uh, session later. And my name is uh, Uli Knack. I'm a professor for um, facade technology in uh, Darmstadt. Um, we, in the beginning, uh, before this uh, public part started, we discussed is it the sixth or the fifth beam event? I think it's the fifth beam event. And it actually started as a kind of a seminar with, um, say, the friends being invited to give some talks about um, um, additive manufacturing in the built environment. And um, yeah, it grew and grew and grew and really developed uh, very nicely, very well. Uh, at some point, we um, uh, linked up with um, um, Form Next, the trade show in Frankfurt about 3D printing, and uh, it started, um, continued growing and growing. We had a nice exhibition uh, last year, a nice booklet uh, made last year as well. And uh, now this whole thing with the pandemic became uh, digital, and we weren't sure if this is good or bad. Um, we have to um, say investigate later, and uh, it may end up in an uh, in an hybrid situation of having um, some digital and some uh, physical uh, aspect. I still miss the exhibition, and I still will miss a lot of coffee with uh, you in the breaks to talk. So that's something which, um, na yeah, um, doesn't work in this uh, digital environment. But on the other side, the digital environment uh, nearly doubled the number of people joining which is also interesting. Yes, obviously this gives you the uh, the, the chance to um, join from wherever you are and not having this additional travel to go. But I would advise you next time you should go again because there's this exhibition which really is super nice um, and it's actually not that small, it's large. And uh, we got the comments from, from next um, colleagues that um, we are the ones with the largest pieces being printed at the trade show at all. And not only one, but say most of them are super large. That's um, no, yeah, an, an interesting one. Um, the program, we made a program of um, um, four um, blocks. Uh, there will be a break in between and there will be discussion around at the end. And uh, when I uh, saw the booklet uh, the other day, which um, uh, Bastian in the end, well, yeah. <laughs> The screen doesn't work, uh, which uh, Bastian uh, made. It's really, uh, it's really again, it's really nice. It's super nice to see um, what we're going to see uh, this uh, day, what will be presented this day. Super interesting project. Uh, again, fresh, pr fresh projects, new things uh, to uh, to jump into um, to see. Uh, very nice, uh, Bastian. Uh, would you be so kind to um, again place the link of the website uh, in the chat so that everybody can during the lecture or later, go to website and uh, go for the download. Uh, it's uh, You either get this on print on demand if you want a printed version or you download it as booklet uh, in, if you if you want. Um, we also ask you to um, administrative things, um, uh, turn your camera off, turn your microphone off so that uh, the audience really works as an audience. And um, um, if you have questions, um, please address them to Philip. I think we have a limited number of people being able to be addressed and uh, Philip will take care of the questions and then raise them in the audience so that we can discuss uh, this as an activity. 
second uh, or next to um, say the team from Darmstadt uh, organizing it, uh, we convinced uh, two characters um, to join us and to help us to um, um, host the sessions. Uh, it's uh, one Heis van der Feld, who's uh, going to be introduced uh, in the second part of this uh, lecture, and the second is um, uh, Roland Smooks, which um, I actually never met physically, but we already had some chats digital. Really interesting. Uh, you were at nighttime, it was early morning in my area from Australia. I'm uh, in, uh, in, in Germany. So um, we see that this uh, digital environment start to work to even create social, um, social relations uh, in this environment. Roland runs in a studio, um, Roland Snook's studio. Um, he um, works at uh, RMIT in Australia, um, runs an algorithmic design and a robotic lab and uh, did his PhD at RMIT, was lecturer in the US Columbia University of Pennsylvania and others. And uh, we asked him to um, share some slides of his work so that you have a glimpse of an idea of what he does. And with that one, I hand actually over to Roland to yeah, introduce himself, and then we go with the first speaker. Uh, thank you very much for the, for the invitation. Um, I'll start by sharing a few slides. Um, so um, as has been said, I'm, um, I'm based in Melbourne. Um, at RMIT University. And in addition to running uh, an architecture studio, I also uh, direct a laboratory at RMIT. In the lab, we loosely talk about it as exploring the design implications of emerging technology. Um, but more specifically, we really work on algorithmic design, um, generation of complex form, uh, robotic fabrication, and the tectonics this might lead to. So a lot of our work is around algorithmic design, and this comes from a background in um, multi-agent systems. So it's a type of algorithmic work in which the individual agent or component interacts with a collective collection of, of agents, and through all these local interactions, global behavior emerges. And so we're interested in what are the complex systems that emerge from the interaction of these, these localized conditions. In doing this work, we over the years, we've been generating highly complex geometries, and a lot of our work and our interest in additive manufacturing is very much about um, how we go about building these complex geometries. And so some of our work has been looking at um, metal additive manufacturing. So things like SLM that I think are quite known. Um, some of our more recent work is looking at um, larger scale metal printing such as WAM. But a lot of our work has been around uh, large scale FDM or polymer printing. And so we've been looking at the way we can, um, we can print a large scale the way we can get this into, into real building projects, how we get them past building codes, how we can demonstrate them within um, sort of an art context, such as this pavilion, or more recently, we're looking at how we take this relatively weak material and we reinforce it. And so that reinforcement is coming through, in this case, um, carbon fiber. But we're also looking at the way that's reinforced with, um, with um, materials such as concrete. Okay, so that was just to, to very briefly just sort of um, set the scene of the sort of work that I do or the kind of background that I have. But my real role here is to um, to help moderate the session and to, um, to introduce the speakers. 